Hello and welcome to Rick's RC Flying Channel. In this episode, we're going to look at fabricating the landing gear. So here the metal already has been cut to shape and now I'm simply inscribing the metal where the bends are going to occur. Okay, we're going to take a look at bending the aluminum. Um, right now, there's just no way I would be able to bend this aluminum. It's five mil, like it's almost a quarter inch thick, probably about more like three sixteenths of an inch. But I just can't bend it. Now you could use a candle to turn it black with the suit, or you can use a lighter. Hold the tip of the flame just above the aluminum. Now you you know you have to spend a, a you know a couple of minutes doing it. I've already started a little earlier. So there it is there, perfectly black. And now what we're going to do is burn that suit off with the torch. When it disappears, you've reached a temperature where you can bend the aluminum. Now the black area is applied about an inch left and right of where the bend will occur. As the temperature increases, you'll eventually start to see the soot start to disappear. So you just keep heating it till you remove all the soot. Once that's complete, you can go ahead with the bend. So the suit now is completely removed. It'd be advisable to be wearing gloves during this whole heating and bending procedure. I couldn't find my gloves in the shop. Aluminum conducts heat very readily, so the entire piece is very hot. Now see how easily it bends with very little effort. You could never do it if it wasn't heated. So each bend location was heated appropriately as demonstrated and then I simply started to bend the landing gear to shape. Now I did have the original landing gear which I was using as a template just to get the angles right. An interesting characteristic with aluminum, when it's heated to the correct temperature the molecules separate then allowing you to bend it. When it cools right down again and it's cold the molecules come together again and it's almost impossible to bend it. All right, this aluminum now is uh, perfectly cold and I just want to show you in its normal state, trying to bend it, I'm literally putting all my weight and strength into this and there's no way I can get that bend. And actually, if I were to force this, you know, by using some uh, other tools to give even greater leverage to the point where you actually do start to bend it, chances are uh, its characteristic would be that it would break. Now, here's where when, when we heated it using the suit method to get to the right temperature, um, if I were to try to bend that out, once I figure out how to get it back in here, here we go. So again, now that it's cooled, I uh, I can't bend it. So it's extremely like I'm not. You can see I'm flexing the entire vise in the steel table here, but extremely hard to get that bend back. Um, you know, with enough leverage you can bend it slightly but that would not be the recommended course of action to take after it's uh, been treated anyways it's extremely uh, strong so i'm uh, generally quite pleased the way the landing gear came out for the sweet and low and uh, 
the annealing process and, you know, heating it up allowed me to bend it because otherwise uh, this is five millimeter or, you know, basically three sixteenth inch aluminum. It would have been impossible to bend without uh, breaking it. So um, I'm, I'm pleased the way that worked out. Uh, the only d thing that I definitely have to do differently is that the pliers and tools I used had teeth on it. And of course, aluminum being a softer metal, it left teeth mark on it. I'm hoping to dress most of that out uh, because I will give it the uh, swirl pattern. And um, I have the original. And uh, so you can see I've, I've dressed it up with the swirl marks. The original edge of the metal had a smooth edge here. Uh, of course, I had to cut this. And um, so it left, uh, the blade left some marks on it, and uh, which is understandable. So I will uh, file all that out. And uh, oh, one thing I'll mention regarding this vise, I, I talk about, you know, when you set up your shop, uh, one of the things that's handy to have if you have a, a plate glass surface somewhere, uh, this is the kind uh, that is with the suction cup. And man, the way it grabs on glass, it's just a solid uh, connection. Most of the surfaces I have, the suction one wouldn't work. Uh, I've had success with it on metal surfaces, but generally on glass, it works the best. So, you know, these you can get just about anywhere, many different styles. And uh, so handy to have this one in particular, if you can articulate different angles. So I'm going to be spending some time filing and dressing it up cleaning it up, and then uh, I'll be uh, drilling holes for it and also uh, uh, swirling it up there. So anyways, um, I'm going to spend some time doing that. So I used a, a coarser uh, file to get the initial cutting edges out. And then I went to a finer one. And now I've got emery cloth, which is uh, 150. And just seeing how it's turning out, I think I basically have, I think, just about every mark out of there. I use a pair of scissors. The, I, I have different colored ones. The black one is used to cut sandpaper and basically just about anything that would ruin the cutting edge. <clears throat> then I have scissors that I use just for cutting fabric and fiberglass. So I have all different kinds depending what I'm cutting. If you try using one pair, it's sure not going to last long. reason I wear gloves at hands uh, when you're working like this with aluminum, they turn black as anything. So let's uh, try this and Um, you know, I was contemplating on painting it. I kind of flip-flopped back and forth, and I ultimately decided just to put all the swirl marks in. And uh, actually, even despite I had put some marks on it with my uh, tools, um, it actually turned out quite nice. So when it's on the model, it'll look real good. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm generally quite pleased the way that turned out. I'll just... Uh, for what it's worth, if uh, someone is new to doing it, uh, some of the things I would uh, recommend is that when you put the uh, brush in, 
don't have it extending way out. Um, it actually runs with less vibration if it's closer in and you also have better control. The other thing is don't push too hard. That seems to be the number one mistake. People think if you push harder, you, you know, you get a better swirl or it goes quicker. Uh, that is not the case. Just lightly touch it. The brush will last a lot longer and you'll get better markings. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, it's turning at fairly high RPM. I, I don't know really how many RPM it is. I use number three setting out of five for what it's worth. I guess they're, you know, they're all different. I, but if you have this one, I use three. Um, because it is turning at a fairly high speed, those little wires can come off. And, you know, just wearing glasses, yeah, it kind of protects your eyes, but it'll hit you in the face. So I do recommend strongly that you wear some kind of facial guard. Don't have anybody, you know, standing without any protection around you. And, uh, you know, protect yourself. So the other thing is I have to drill holes in here. Um, here's the other one, which came off the other sweetener. So there's going to be holes drilled all over. I recommend not drilling the holes till after you've uh, treated it with the swirls. Because what happens is when these holes are there, every time you go over and around that area with the brush, it knocks the wires off. Easier to go about it when you uh, don't have the holes drilled. So there we go. And uh, I might do a little more swirling a little bit later, but uh, generally I'm. We got the landing gear, and uh, the next step is uh, drilling the holes and then mounting it to the fuselage, and then also the torsion system. Okay, another part of the project done. Well, that completes the fabrication of the aluminum landing gear. And what you see underneath it here is a suspension system that can be incorporated on any type of aluminum landing gear. So for those that uh, may be interested in it, I have a separate video on how it works and how it's made. And uh, I'll provide the uh, link in the description in this video. And uh, if you like the video, please select like and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, I always welcome them. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.